assembly and I can see that there's this latch component in here. So if we take a look at its current properties, what we can see is that there's a head latch, we can see its part number, and there's three of these in this assembly. So if I look at the bill of materials right now, and I see the head latch, we can see that it's, it's counting three. This is on the structured view, so I can see there's three in here. And if I was to look at the model data tab, what I can also see is that there's three of these head latches. Now in this instance, there is an ordered operation that makes it easier for the assembler to put this together. So if they put on the two side latches, before they do this first one, it just makes their lives a bit easier. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take these two, as we can see, the two outside ones, and I'm gonna right click on them, and I'm going to go into instance properties. So what I'm doing is I'm setting the properties for these two instances. I'm gonna create a new instance property, so there's no existing custom I properties on this, and I'm gonna say I wanna see these in step one. So I'm gonna click add, and we can see that you know, step one has been added. So I'll click okay to that. Then I'll take that third one, which is in the front here, and I'm gonna go again, go into the instance properties. Again, as it's not an existing custom I property, I've got to you know, recreate it. So in this case, this is gonna be step two, and I'm gonna click add, and we'll click okay. Now notice that in the browser, it does show little, little stars to show that there is some instance properties. And if I hold my cursor over it, I can actually see what the instance property is. So if I was to take, let's say, the second instance here, and I was to go into the instance properties again, and let's say we wanted to call this one, you know, paint, and we want this one to be green, you know, I can, I can add that. And when I click OK, now when I hold my cursor over it, I'm gonna see that there's, you know, paint equals green, whereas it doesn't exist on the other ones. Now do notice on the right click is there is the option to delete the instance property. So instead of going into it and delete them, you can just simply pick delete and it, it removes all the, the you know, overridden properties from it. Well now if I go and take a look at the bill of materials, what we're gonna see is from the model data tab is that notice that they're split out now. And they're split out, as we can see, based on the, the highlighting, but it's not actually showing me right now why it's overridden. So if I hold my cursor over there, I can see that there is an instance property. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that property. In this case, the, the name of the property is step. Now again, the reason why that's not appearing in the list because it's not an existing custom I property. If it was an existing custom I property, it would already be there. But I'm gonna click okay, and now notice that those properties show up in blue. So what it's showing me here is it's showing me that there's three occurrences that have over and I properties. Now, even though you know these are happen to be the same, it's still not going to merge them together because it's they're separate conditions. Now, if I flip over to the structured tab, notice that it's merging them together. And the reason why it's merging it together because I merge components based on their part numbers. So a new option here is to not merge instance rows. I still wanna merge based on part number, so if they have the same properties, you know, like, you know, merge them together, but I don't wanna merge the instance properties. So I'm gonna click OK, and now what it does is it separates those components. Now maybe what I'd like to do is just sort these, so let's just do a, a quick sort and we'll sort these by the part number, and let's do a renumber on them. And I'm going to add to the list here that same step property. So now we can see why those components are, are separate, why they're, why they're different. Now there's not gonna be any change to the parts only view because we were working with a subassembly, so that component's not gonna show up in there anyway. So there won't be any change to the parts only view, but we would see a very similar, similar occurrence. Now let's create a drawing for this. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add in a parts list. So we're gonna add in a parts list for this view. We are gonna go with structure because that's the one that's, that's gonna show us our items. I'm gonna click okay and we're gonna add that parts list. Now I need to make some, a couple changes to this parts list. Essentially what I need to do is I need to add the column and the column that we want to, to add is we wanna add the step property. 
We'll click OK. We'll click OK to that. And notice that they're still being separated. Now I was okay with that in the bill of materials because it showed you know the components had instance properties. But in the parts list, I don't really need to break those up because you know both these head latches are the same component. They're just going to be installed in step one. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a group by. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add a group setting. And what I want to group by is I want to group by the step. Now I'm not going to display the group participants. We'll click OK to that. And now what we can see is that it's merged those items together. Now if we go back into the group settings, maybe I don't want to show the item numbers either, and we can see it's turned off the item numbers. So it all depends on how you want the information to be displayed. So now we can see that you know these ones are merged together into that step one. We can see the instance that's going to be in, in step two. And just to, to make this match, I'm just going to sort by the part number, and that way we get them grouped together. Or maybe what we'd like to do is we'd actually like to sort based on the part number then by the step and that way the step is in, in step number two. So now we can see the the merging of the items and now what I can do is I could you know balloon in detail those instances. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to add in a balloon and just to show what we could do here is let's take this balloon and let's override this style and instead of showing the quantity, what we're going to do is we're going to display the step. We'll add a balloon there. And here we can see that this is item five and it's step number two. So hopefully that shows you how you can utilize the, the instance properties, how you can take you know, an occurrence of a component and you can override its properties changing just that or a selection of occurrences without impacting the rest. Again, it's an extension of custom I properties. So you, you can either pre, you know, bake in that custom I property into the part or add it on the fly. So that's the new instance properties within Inventor 2022.